Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. We're looking forward to getting into another video. These are going to be good and they are going to stir some things up and we're going to have to just kind of walk through some things when you become a little more absolute. Paul's instructions on progression. And these are some of the things that we're talking about. So we do these videos every week, number one, so that people can uh, realize how effective their life can be with God coming out of the pages of their Bible and getting into their life. Uh, this is very, very important. You can study about God your entire life. You can quote scriptures. You can go to church. You can be a part of all kinds of different groups and still not have answers to your own prayers. In other words, where you're always going to the hand of man to get help and you don't ever seem to get help from God. Well, that would be having a form of religion but denying the power. There's no other way to say that. That's just what it is. We want that reversed. We want to begin to see God in our lives, having change in areas, even if it's small, even if it's little things. And these are some of the things that we share in Adventures in Grace as a means of you beginning to open your eyes becoming aware that God actually is all around you at all times and you can connect with him and stay connected just as Jesus did from one moment to the next. Number two, uh, when God becomes more real to you, which is exactly what Christianity is all about, then faith becomes a natural expression of your relationship with him, which produces Answers, number three, or testimonies. Just a couple of simple testimonies. Um, well, I'll have to look. Let me look here and see if my iPad, yes, it did. So this is really good. And it goes along with a testimony that I have that's just real simple. It's just fun. Uh, good morning. Just a quick grace testimony. I went to the grocery store near me, wanted watermelon, but they didn't have any. I forgot about it. But this Sunday, we had a fellowship and someone brought watermelon. There was a lot left over. I got to take some home. God loves me and got me my watermelon. Well, you say, well, that's just a coincidence. No, 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 wait. The more you begin to allow God to actually be a part of your life, these things that years ago you might have just brushed off as, well, that was pretty nice today. I was able to actually get some watermelon. Now you realize that God's paying attention to the desires of your heart, to your thoughts, to your requests. And when you begin to open up your heart and mind, you begin to see that God's actually answering prayers. You've got to find him somewhere so that you can begin to find him everywhere. Erin and I were in a hotel and she likes her coffee first thing in the morning and there was uh, no half and half in the room. And so instead of, because <clears throat> we were only going to be in that hotel a couple of nights, instead of going out and getting, you know, a carton of half and half, I thought, well, I'll go down to the restaurant in the morning and see if they'll give me some half and half. So I went down to the restaurant and there was a lady and it, from where I was to where she was working, it was a little bit of a distance and uh, she was uh, doing something and she said, can I help you? And I said, yes, I, I actually have a request. And while she walked over to me, she had a hold of a little uh, cup that was more of a long and, and skinny cup. And uh, it was a metal cup. And she had walked over to me while she was asking me, what can I do to help? And I said, well, actually, my wife need some half and half. Um, I would love it if I can buy some from you or if I could just get a little bit of a cup of, and she didn't even say anything. She just went, <laughs> because that's what was in the cup. That's what she was pouring in that cup was half and half. And that's what I asked for. She just handed it to me, didn't even say anything. And I just looked at her and said, thank you, appreciate it, and walked away. And then what's your response? Well, my response is, thank you, Lord, or thank you guys, or thank you grace. In other words, the Lord is working in my life right then in something so simple to just remind me that he knows my thoughts, he knows where I'm going, he knows where I'm headed, and he's making preparation. If he could make preparation with something so simple as that, how much more can he make preparation concerning a spot that you find on your body that needs to leave and the doctors say it's cancerous. Well, 
If he's already making preparation for something so simple as half and half, why wouldn't he make preparation when he's already healed you of, of cancer so that the anointing and the presence of God wouldn't be just perfectly aligned, aligning a young lady working at a counter to pour in half and half to actually hold on to it while she comes over to say, is there anything I can do to help you? And then just hands it to me. Why wouldn't he also make such great preparation with the work of the Holy Spirit so that the moment you find anything out like that, immediately the presence of God is there to kill that, drive it out of your body and release you from that bondage. If we can see God in the smallest of places, we can find God and see God in what people think are the bigger places. God never changes. So God working with you in something that's small to you is the same God working with you in something that's big to you. And when God gets involved in your equation, it always turns out with answers. Yet at the same time, if we, if we exclude him by not paying attention, then you're on your own. And that's kind of sad because that's what Paul was actually preaching is we're living in a dispensation of grace. We've got to learn how to let God become the God that he is now to us, which is the father who wants to touch us and bring blessing into our life with such great and wonderful regularity. Let's go to our Matthew chapter 11, 27 to 30 passage in the Message Bible as a means to connect ourselves to where we're going in our video today. Uh, Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitted upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, that's always an encouragement to me every time I speak that or, or quote that verse because it constantly reminds me how much God wants to enter into a relationship with me that is a walking, talking, experiential relationship. He doesn't want me going through, if you will, all the religious things that we do to try to have a relationship. He wants me to enjoy the relationship and then be able to enjoy him in even the things that we do. In other words, do I have to read to try to find him? No, I can find him alone. But I read the scriptures because they open my heart to more experiences that I can have with him and other ways and other thoughts that Paul shared with us as far as don't fall into some of those pitfalls. Don't go into some of those dark places. Stay focused on the Lord. So the scriptures remind me. They give me balance. They give me foundation. They remind me of how much God wants to touch me. They encourage me to find him the way others have found him too. Thank God for the scriptures. Thank God for my prayer time. But folks, I, wanna, I want you to know that everything that we do that someone may seem to think is religious is so that we can further enhance the wonderful relationship that we have with him. So let's jump into some of these thoughts. Paul's wanting us to progress, which we could say Jesus is wanting us to progress. I gave you that example about the flashlight. If we were given the world's greatest flashlight and, and we were given a lifetime supply of batteries, would you ever turn it off? And in my upbringing, I was always reminded to turn the lights off that I turned on, to pull a plug out that I put a plug into the socket. I was reminded of that constantly. And so just in the back of my mind, even today, I, I don't have a problem with turning lights off when I leave. We have certain lights to come on on the house as accent outside lights to come on as accent as well when we're gone so that it doesn't look like we're just, the house is completely dark. But at the same time, 
if I relate to this situation with the flashlight, I would say that I would be more, in, more inclined to turn the flashlight off, even if I had a lifetime supply of batteries, because that has become a pattern or a habit or a routine. We can take those kinds of patterns, habits, routines into a relationship with God, and therefore we find ourselves on one moment and off the next moment. So many folks, actually, as we've talked about this before, their brand of Christianity is just getting to the building. In other words, we made it to church, and we're actually not too late, and we're still able to get into the song service. I feel really good about myself, Ooh, and I can just settle down in this church building. But the church building is just one facet of your relationship with God because you've got all week long to enjoy him and to, if you will, assume testimony after testimony after testimony of God doing wonderful and simple things in your life. So Paul's wanting us to increase, to not have a form of religion but deny the power. In other words, we're doing all these things. We've got the right things to say, but we can't get a prayer answered. God doesn't seem to be involved. It's more what we do. We're always involving the hand of man. These are some of the things that people really struggle with. They, they look at medical science, for instance, concerning healing and think, well, God made doctors to have wisdom. Well, if, if the doctor's wisdom was for anything, it was for the unsaved world to stay alive long enough to hear the gospel message that we now have a great physician, we now have a savior of not only your spirit and your soul, but also your body. Once a believer comes to Christ, whether he's able to make the conversion or not, the truth of the conversion is you need no one else ever again. You don't need doctors. You don't need the hand of man. You don't need the counsel of man. You have the counselor on the inside. You've got the helper on the inside. You've got the strengthener on the inside, the standby on the inside, the advocate on the inside, the intercessor on the inside. You've got everything you need on the inside and the Holy Spirit that's there is constantly helping you and teaching you to abide in him. And abide means to be continually connected. And when the the, the um, wires are connected to the light sockets and to uh, the fuses correctly, and you turn the switch on, the lights will be on like they are today in my room. I don't have to look at them to make sure they are. I'm actually benefiting from some of that light in the room as the ambient light outside is not at the angle to give me all the light I need. So I had to turn on some of the lights. Isn't it wonderful that we can turn a switch on and those lights come on? Isn't it wonderful that you can keep your switch on with Jesus and those lights are on? Sickness can't come on a body that's continually connected to God. Sickness won't remain in a body to someone that is connected to God. But now you live life long enough, what you see are patterns and habits of mankind. In other words, if all the Christians were going to the left, you would think that I probably need to go to the left because everybody's going there. That must mean they are right. I mean, wouldn't it be strange if, if I felt like it was right to go to the right when everybody else is going to the left? And then herein is where we lose traction because the answers are not in what someone else is doing or what's popular for the day. The answers are in Christ and what is spoken in the truth of the word of God, what is revealed to you in your relationship with God from the Lord to your heart. Therein lies your answers, not in what someone else is doing. So we can water down the scriptures, water down uh, Christianity to the point that we say, well, you know, hey, the wisdom of, of, of truth is that you would consult medical science to find out what your problem is so then you can believe God. And then, of course, use medical science all that you can and believe God too. And we've now come to a place in 2024 where that's what's preached in the pulpits because we're too afraid 
to actually have someone experience God alone, because if they died, maybe there'd be a lawsuit, and on and on and on, or et cetera, et cetera, it goes. So here's where we have to actually be careful. Paul wants us to increase. God wants us to increase. But as long as you're holding on to something that's not allowing you to go forward, you'll spin in circles. This is where it gets absolute and sticky. Now, not sticky from God's standpoint, but sticky from the Christian standpoint that brings mixture into his life. Why would Jesus say, I'll spew lukewarm out of my mouth? Because lukewarm is a little bit of cold and a little bit of hot, meaning there's no distinction. And that's exactly what takes place in Christendom. We bring in the thoughts of the world until what was hot in Christ is now lukewarm. What was cold for the world is now lukewarm, and we can't really tell what's what. Literally, people will validate negativity that's constantly in their life if every once in a while they can have a little bit of positive, and there's nothing about that that says Christianity. Everything about that says religion and tradition. Because everything that's of Christ is 100% pure Christ. Now, as we're learning to develop ourselves in a relationship where we are having prayers answered, recognizing the presence of God in our life, and learning how to stay connected to him, obviously people will do what they need to do to stay alive, to get along, and to continue to move forward in their personal life. But moving forward in our spiritual life, we're going to have to get a hold of some of these principles and thoughts about being 100% with Jesus. So that's our aim. That's our target. You can't hit a target you don't know exists. And if the target is to continue to swim in lukewarm mediocrity and compromise, you will never go further. Brother Hagin made a statement years ago. He said, always when you preach, shoot for the moon. If you get halfway, you'll get further than if you shoot halfway. In other words, if you're preaching mixture, you'll never even get good mixture. If you preach 100% in Christ, you'll go further than if you preach mixture. So what is that for us than to preach a message that has 100% in it? You know, I've taken some time with this because we've gotten some response back to some of the things that we've said. And I just have to share that. I'm not condemning anybody for any choice you make. It's not my choice. It's your choice. I'm called to not only live this, but to preach this so that it would stir your conscience to have an option to make a better choice. If your choices spiritually connect with God, you will find yourself beginning to slowly progress so that you're no longer turning the flashlight on and off, but you begin to leave it on. And by beginning to leave it on, you begin to dispel darkness from your life and you'll begin to have testimonies of what God has done for your life. In the meantime, while you're learning this, if you go to the doctor, go to a good doctor. If you get medicine, get good medicine because not everything is equal in the medical field. And we found that out just a few years ago with all the heinous work of what's taking place out there where doctors and hospitals have been paid thousands upon thousands of dollars to lie to you and to give you a protocol that would not help your body, that would, that would kill you, and they stamp COVID on it to try to push a narrative that was fake, phony, and false. It didn't mean that people didn't die. It's sad that people did die. Most of those that did die would die if they weren't messed with, would die of a compromised immune system themselves. But so many people died unnecessarily because of the evil that's in this world. I thank God if we drink any deadly thing, it will no by means hurt us. That means if we eat any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt us. I thank God that if we touch a deadly thing, it will by no means hurt us. That if we pick up a serpent or snake, it will not hurt us. Meaning that if there's anything out there that's evil, thank God we have immunity from that in Christ. 
but we've got to pursue the God only connection. You can't pursue compromise and believe in compromise and move forward with your relationship with God. It just doesn't work. And if you think it does, you're deceived. And I'm not going to apologize for saying something very straightforward. But thank God we all have our own choice. And we're here to encourage you that if you've chosen medical science, we want you to know that the presence of God is here to touch your body, to expedite all of what's taken place in your life and bring you into a healing where you know that God actually touched you. And the next time you can call upon him before you call upon medical science and begin to see a change in your body as you begin to progress from glory to glory where the Spirit of the Lord is leading you and guiding you. Well, this has been a little different. We'll get back into our subject the next time on Adventures in Grace. Go on over to jhmi at jimhockaday.com and send us in your stories, even if they're as simple as the half and half that I talked about and as the watermelon that a friend of ours talked about. It doesn't matter how simple it is when God's involved Everything changes from cancer dying to getting some half and half for your coffee. Well, it's good to be with you. We'll see you next time on Adventures in Grace.